Now let's think about what curves, uh, equations involving the polar coordinates represent. So in this case, we're given 1 equals r cosine theta. And this one turns out to be real easy because r cosine theta is just x. So this is just the same as the vertical line x equals 1. Let's take a look at this equation and see what curve this represents. Um, so r is 2 sine theta plus 2 cosine theta. I can use the fact that y is r sine theta and x is r cosine theta to write down 2 times y over r plus plus 2 times x over r. I can multiply both sides by r to get 2 times y plus x. We know r squared is x squared plus y squared. And depending on how well you know your conic sections, this turns out to be a circle. So Let's move everything to this side to get 0 equals x squared minus 2x plus y squared minus 2y. And then I'm going to complete the square. I'll add 1 here and add 1 here and add 2 to the other side. That leaves 2 equals x minus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared. And this is a circle with radius square root 2 and center 1 comma 1. All right, now let's try to write Cartesian equations in polar form. So here's a first example, x squared plus y squared equals 9. This one's not too bad because x squared plus y squared is just r squared. And here we have an equation in polar form. We could write this as r equals 3 if we want. So this equation says you're looking at all polar coordinates where r is 3 and theta can be anything. So I don't need to include negative 3 because that's already included as theta varies over the entire circle. Now let's try and see how we can write x plus y equals 9 in polar form. Again, we'll use the equations x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. And this is straightforward. We just write down what we have. And that gives the equation in polar form. Suppose we have x squared minus y squared equals 1. Again, we use these equations to get r squared cosine squared theta minus r squared sine squared theta equals 1. We can factor out an r squared. And if you remember your identities, cosine squared minus sine squared is cosine of 2 theta. So we really have this equation. So that's converted the original equation into polar form. Now let's try to sketch some polar curves. So we're given an equation involving the polar coordinates. And now we want to see what the actual curve looks like. In this example, we're given r squared minus 3r plus 2 equals 0. And to see what this means, we can factor it into r minus 1 times r minus 2 equals 0. And this says r equals 1 or r equals 2. 
And this is real easy to sketch. So we look at all points where R is 1, or the points where R equals 2. So we just have two concentric circles. Here's another equation. This one's not so obvious, so we're going to have to make a table of values to see what the curve looks like. So let's do it in terms of theta and r. So here's a table of values. And now I'll try to plot it. When the angle is zero, so I'm here, I have r is minus 2, so that means I go backwards by 2 to get this point. When we have pi over 4, we're here, and we have negative 1.12, so we go backwards by 1, 1.12, we're there. When we're at pi over 2, the r value equals 1. When we're at 3 pi over 4, we have 3.12. When we have pi, we get 4. When we have 5 pi over 4, we get 3.12. When we have 3 pi over 2, we get 1. When we have 7 pi over 2, we get negative 1.12. And then at 2 pi, we're back to negative 2. Um, so let's see, what direction did we go? We sort of went here to here, and then we're sort of up there, and it turns out if you plot more points, you'll see that the curve sort of does this. So we get a shape like that. Maybe if I drew it better, it would look something like that.